Hey, what's good, Wahoo Nation? So, um, uh, thought I'd drop a quick video here uh, before I go out and uh, play around of golf here. So, I thought I would give one of my world famous state of the program videos uh, just to see, give my assessment on where this UVA football team, where they stand right now. So, we're three games into the season. We're three games into the season, and we're 0 and 3, and it's not a shocker, to be honest with you. Um, I kind of expected this. I knew going into the season that we were not going to be very good, but I did not expect it to be this level of bad. So we're 0-3 on the season, and there's so many teams, so many team, so many things wrong with this team right now. I don't even know where to begin. Uh, right now, I would say that the biggest issue on this team is the offensive line. Now, the, the pass protection has not been there. The running game, we can't run the football. And I, I just don't know. And the offensive line was a big issue for us last year, and it's going to be an issue for us this year once again. Uh, it doesn't matter who the quarterback is, whether it's Tony Musket or Anthony Calandre, which I'll talk about that in a minute too. You can't expect your offense to run efficiently when – when your quarterback is running for his life on every snap and you you know once in a while they might open up a hole in the run game but um but yeah i mean this this team is just bad and then um i do like what i see out of our receivers uh specifically malik washington who transferred in from northwestern he was the leading receiver from northwestern last year um he he looked good he's looked good so far this year um He's really been the only bright spot on this offense. Kobe Pace, who transferred in from Clemson, uh, he's looked good as well. Uh, unfortunately, last night against uh, Maryland, he got hurt, and um, I don't know what the status, what his status is, and all that. In the JMU game, Kobe Pace, he looked good as well. Uh, it's definitely good to see Mike Collins back. Uh, the recovery that he's made uh, after what happened last year, uh, definitely good to see him back. And so. But uh, this team is just on so many levels bad. And then let's let's switch sides to the defense. Now, I thought if there was going to be a bright spot on this team, especially defensively, I thought it would be the defensive line. Considering what we have returning with Cam Butler, with Jameer Carter, Aaron Falmui, and um, uh, Chico Bennett. You know, our our pass rush has been non-existent. Okay. Our pass rush has been non-existent. We're not getting any pressure on the quarterback. In three games this season, only three sacks. One sack per game. Two of those is by Cam Butler. We're not doing a good job of containing the run. And then, you know, our back seven, I'll sort of kind of give them a pass because they are relatively young. Uh, we did lose Nick Jackson last year uh, We to the transfer portal. We lost Fentral Cypress to the transfer portal. And then A.J. Johnson, he declared for the NFL draft. So I'll sort of kind of give them a pass because the only returners, notable returners that we have uh, in the secondary, uh, Jonas Sanker, as well as um, uh, Cohen King. Uh, special teams, eh, I mean, special teams hasn't been all that great either. Last night was another indication of that. So, um, and as far as the quarterback situation goes, I will say this, Anthony Calandria, he does look promising, um, but he is a rookie. You know, he is a true freshman, you know, basically being thrown into the wolves. But um, I, I like what I see out of him so far. Now, if he could cut down on the mistakes, you know, you know, don't, you know, just cut down on mistakes. I think, I think he could be a bright spot for us. So, but having said all of that, guys, we're not in a good place right now. And again, I knew that going into this season, we were not going to be very good, but I did not think that it would be this level of bad. So assessing the three games so far this year, the Tennessee game, our, I knew what was going to happen. I knew Tennessee was going to blow us out, and they did. And then you look at the JMU game last week. Now, um, the team overall played pretty good. Uh, well, the, off, the offense played pretty good. The defense eh, was a little shaky. Um but one thing people want to talk about, they want to talk about the, the lightning delay that lasted for about an hour and 20 minutes or so. And they, and all of a sudden the team just fell off after that. Well, people want to make, make that as an excuse. 
it's not an excuse because JMU, they had the same rain delay that we did. And yet they came in and beat us in our own house. And there was probably 10,000 JMU fans at that game, which Harrisonburg is not all that far away from Charlottesville anyway. So that's besides the point. Um, you know, we had that, we had a double digit lead in the fourth quarter and then we blew it. And then last night against Maryland, oh my gosh, uh, that game, the offense looked really good starting out. We were up 14 to nothing in the first quarter. And what happens? We just hit a brick wall. It's like, you know, it's like our, 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 our coaching staff just went back to our old ways, you know, <laughs> We just went back to our old ways. We were up 14 to nothing in the first quarter, and Maryland comes out and scores 42 unanswered, and we don't score a single point for the rest of the game. And so, I don't know, man. Uh, and it's like, and, and you know, it's 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 coaching, because Maryland made the right adjustments last night, and. We didn't. We just went back to our old ways, and that's squarely. That's Tony Elliott, that's Des Kitchings, and that's John Radzinski. All three of those guys, they did not make the right adjustments when they needed to, and Maryland did, and that's why Maryland, that's why Maryland beat us the way that they did last night. So, anyway, uh, I know I'm about six and a half minutes into this video already. I don't want to ramble on too much, but... Uh, I just don't know, guys. I mean, we le we legitimately could be staring down the barrel of an 0-12 season. We I can see us going 0-12 this year, guys. And and that's no joke. Because the only teams I can see us beating, because we got NC State coming to town next week. And uh, we got NC State coming to town next week this coming Friday, Brennan Armstrong makes his return, and boy, wouldn't that be embarrassing if he comes back to uh, to his old school and humiliates us for the whole world to see. And then uh, we got, see, who do we got after that? We got Boston College, which Boston College is just as bad as we are. I mean, whoever loses that game will be the worst team in, in the country in, among the Power Five. There's no denying that. And then William and Mary. I mean, the only two teams I can legitimately see us beating is William and Mary and Boston College, and that and that's no lie either. And so things are not looking good right now for this team. And I'm not going to say you know that we should fire Tony Elliott. Well, for one thing, we can't because if we fired him after this year, the buyout, the buyout would be like six million, and and that would that would cost too much. They're they're not going to. They're not going to do that, but things are not looking good right now, and I have I'm having a hard time believing that it's going to get better. And so, you know, we'll we'll see. But uh, yeah, so you guys, you guys, tell me tell me your thoughts on this season. I think it pretty much aligns with what I'm feeling right now about this team right now. So uh, leave it down below in the comments section, guys. Thanks for watching, and as always, go Hoos.